Hello, this is Jacob and Devin's current events documentary for 2B government, and our topic was diseases. I'm Jacob, and the five diseases that we chose to look at are Ebola, HIV and AIDS, cancer, brain tumors, and hyperthyroidism. Now we will show you a video explaining how Ebola works. The Ebola virus is a highly aggressive virus that is transmitted through bodily contact with an infected, symptomatic individual. The Ebola virus enters the body primarily through direct contact of mucous membranes, like the eyes or through abrasions in the skin. When inside the body, the virus fuses with tissue cells, invades them, and releases its genetic content into the cell. This is similar to many viruses, wherein the viral RNA uses the host cells to generate copies of itself. The genetic material takes over the cell machinery to replicate itself. New copies of the virus are formed, released into the system, and dispersed. This also causes the cells to explode, sending infectious particles flying. Ebola then overpowers the immune system. The very cells that are meant to fight infection are used as carriers to spread infection to other body parts, including the liver, spleen, kidneys, and brain. The virus attacks almost every organ and tissue in the human body, resulting in an overwhelming inflammatory reaction. This is what causes sudden flu-like symptoms that are the first signs of Ebola. In more recent Ebola news, the nurse that contracted Ebola in Texas, also known as the Ebola nurse, is suing the hospital for damages for past and future physical pain, mental anguish, physical impairment, loss of enjoyment, mental expenses, and loss of earning capacity. The lawsuit has not gone through yet, but she is still trying to sue the hospital. The nurse is still getting a paycheck from the hospital, however, but she still does not work. The reason for this is because she is suffering fatigue and body aches, but she is not sure it is from Ebola or the drugs that she received as a cure. She also experiences anxiety and frequent nightmares and suffers the stigma of being the Ebola nurse and says she might not be a nurse again, which is another reason why she is suing. Another reason the nurse is suing is that she is facing a number of issues with regard to her health and her career, and the lawsuit provides a way to address them. But more importantly, it will help uncover the truth of what happened and educate all healthcare providers and administrators about ways to be better prepared for the next public health emergency. The next disease you are going to look at are brain tumors. There are two types of brain tumors. There is a primary brain tumor and a secondary brain tumor. A primary brain tumor is a tumor which begins in the brain. And a secondary brain tumor is when a tumor starts elsewhere in the body and then sends cells which end up growing in the brain. Now, brain tumors don't always have cancer, cancerous cells in them, but they can. The symptoms of brain tumors depend on their size, type, and location. The most common symptoms of brain tumors include headaches, numbness or tingling in the arms or legs, seizures, memory problems, mood and personality changes, bounds and walking problems, nausea and vomiting, changes in speech, vision, or hearing. Studies have found risk factors for brain tumors to include ionizing radiation from high-dose x-rays, for example, radiation therapy, and family history. The treatment of brain tumors also depend on the type, location, and size of the tumor, as well as the age and health of the patient. Options for tumor treatment include surgery, 
radiation therapy, and chemotherapy, which is a combination of all the therapies. In more recent brain tumor news, a dye derived from Deathstalker scorpion venom that illuminates cancer cells during surgery has been approved for testing in kids and young adults at Seattle's Children's Hospital. The AMS diet is to solve a stubborn problem of how to get the target cells during surgery without removing healthy cells as well. The diet works by binding to a target protein on the surface of the cancer cells, which isn't present in normal cells. We are now going to show you a video about HIV and AIDS. We explain HIV and AIDS. The human immune system defends the body against illnesses all the time. It uses guards in the blood called T cells to recognize any intruders and destroy them. But instead of attacking the body, the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, attacks those T cells themselves. It turns them into copy machines to make more copies of itself, then eventually kills the infected T cells. Without treatment, it takes eight years on average for a person with HIV to develop AIDS, or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. By then, there aren't enough T cells to fight off various infections and diseases. So it's not the virus directly, but the diseases that are eventually fatal. Humans first acquired HIV from blood contact with apes and gradually transmitted it to more people through unprotected sex, used syringes, and childbirth. AIDS remained undiscovered until a sudden outbreak among gay men in New York and San Francisco in 1981. Very quickly, people began developing the same unusual symptoms around the world. The patients suffered from rare forms of skin cancer, pneumonia or thrush, and few survived. Prejudice against homosexuality made research funding hard to get and more and more people were getting sick. What could be done? Keep the virus from spreading. It became clear that the best preventive measure was safe sex, as condoms kept the virus from infecting others. Additionally, blood banks started testing blood, and new programs even distributed clean needles to drug users. Finally, in 1987, the first treatment against the virus was released the ancestor of combination therapy. The medication still isn't a cure, but it keeps the virus from multiplying and destroying the host's immune system. By starting treatment early, people with HIV can now live long, healthy lives. Unfortunately, many people still lack access to medication, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Over the last 30 years, about 36 million people have died while two million more are infected each year. Scientists have made a lot of progress, but are still looking for the cure. You too can help end the AIDS crisis. Play safe, get tested, donate to support research, prevention, and care, and spread the word. So in more recent news regarding HIV AIDS, a research group up in Pennsylvania has found a medicine or a drug that may one day cure AIDS. Now for so long AIDS has had a cocktail of drugs that has never really cured AIDS, but you know, stopped the symptoms. But this one is in its third phase with randomized cl clinical trials underway. The results on the first two phases of this drug were so successful that an entire section of the World AIDS Conference will be dedicated to this drug. They received a $6 million four-year grant from the National Institute of Health, and the drug was originally tried in the 1980s with AIDS victims who were not getting a stabilizing cocktail, and now it's being tried again for 20 weeks alongside other current therapies such as stabilizing cocktails. Now, this results, results from this won't be complete until 2017, so that means the research grant will have some extra time in case things go wrong. But this is a big, big breakthrough for people with HIV and AIDS everywhere.
Hyperthyroidism is a condition in which the thyroid gland is overactive and makes excessive amounts of the thyroid hormone. The thyroid gland is an organ located on the front of your neck and releases hormones that control your metabolism, breathing, heart rate, nervous system, weight, body temperature, and many other functions essential to the body. When the thyroid gland is overactive, otherwise known as hyperthyroidism, the body's processes speed up and you may experience nervousness, anxiety, rapid heartbeat, hand tremors, excessive sweating, weight loss, and sleep problems, among other devastating symptoms. Now, in a recent study conducted with over 70,000 uh, patients, it is the largest study to date involving hyperthyroidism. It found that there is an increased fracture rate in adults with hip, spine, and other fractures, especially among the low thyroid stimulating hormone levels. Now, the authors identified prospective cohort studies from the United States, Europe, Australia, and Japan. The study covered 70,298 participants, median age of 64 years, 61.3% of them were women, which 4,092 had subclinical hyperthyroidism, and 2,219 had subclinical hyperthyroidism. Compared with patients with urothyroidism and those with subclinical hyperthyroidism had an increased risk for fracture, for fracture after adjustment of age and sex. We are now going to show you a video about lung cancer. If you or someone close to you has been recently diagnosed with cancer, you know how overwhelming it can feel. Maybe you're also getting tons of confusing information and advice. Let's cut through the noise, discover what cancer really is, and learn about available treatment options. After all, the more you know, the more confident you'll feel when talking to your doctor and making decisions. So what is cancer? The answer begins in our cells. Our bodies are made up of trillions of them, and they're constantly dying and regenerating. Normally, a cell divides and makes a perfect copy of itself, using a genetic blueprint called DNA. That copy also divides, and so on, while older or damaged cells are told to die off, making way for new, healthy ones. Once in a while, though, the DNA blueprint in a cell can get damaged. Sometimes the cause is a chemical or environmental carcinogen. You might even have a hereditary risk for cancer. Other times, we don't know the cause. Normal, healthy cells are highly regulated by your body and listen to signals for when to grow, divide, and die. Sometimes, the cell's blueprint is damaged in such a way that it stops listening to the body and ignores the body's signals. And so, this rogue cell keeps right on dividing and dividing, eventually forming a tumor. In some cases, the cancer stays put and is localized. In other cases, the cancer spreads or metastasizes. When they are metastatic, tumors consume the body's resources as they grow, destroying healthy, functioning tissues and organs along the way. So what's next? Well, one way to start dealing with cancer is to arm yourself with information about your options. If caught early, many tumors can be removed with surgery. Radiation is another kind of treatment. It attempts to kill cancer cells by aiming small doses of radiation at very precise areas. But at times, cancer spreads to distant tissues. In this case, doctors may use chemotherapy, or chemo, to attack rapidly dividing cancer cells. Unfortunately, this treatment also attacks other types of cells that divide rapidly, such as the ones that make up hair and skin cells. There's also a promising new kind of treatment called targeted therapy, which uses drugs that are precisely, well, targeted at the underlying DNA mutations causing your tumor to grow. And this can be more effective and less toxic than traditional treatments. To see if targeted therapy is an option for you, there are tests that identify the changes in your DNA that are unique to your tumor, so treatment can be tailored just for you. Then, specialized drugs may be used to attack the cancer cells, with fewer effects on your healthy cells. So, there you have it. The basics of cancer and common treatment options. In more recent lung cancer news, researchers have done a study finding that those who 
take a certain type of surgery, those with a stage 3B non-small cell lung cancer have an average of 10 months longer lifespan than those who just have chemotherapy and radiation. Surgery works by removing the diseased lung tissue instead of just having the chemotherapy and radiation try to kill the cells. Uh, lung cancer is currently the top killer, cancer killer in the United States and having something like this will, you know, increase the survival rate of one of the worst diseases out there right now. And, but the surgery does have some issues in the fact that the cancer is so far advanced that some people may not be able to have it because of how far advanced it is and because they are too ill to have it. But the increase of 10 months is a large amount of time for the, the disease and what could happen if they don't have the surgery.